Hey guys, this is Jerry, welcome to the channel. Today I will show you the quick tutorial on the digital dashboard that's available on the GWM Tank 300. This particular vehicle is the New Zealand version. It should be identical to the Australian version on the right hand drive. As always, you can find all the timestamps down below if you do skip forward. If you wish to, don't forget to subscribe and like. That would be really helpful for the channel to grow. All right, this is how the dashboard looks like on the Tank 300 for the digital dashboard. After that, we can see the information on different panels. We can separate this particular system into three big panels. On the very left, that's your speedo. That's going to be permanently displayed. You can always see everything around there. In the center, you can consider this as your driving panel, but you do have different displays where you can select. On the right, that's your information panel. You can see the warning information, you can just see the odometer, trip information, things like that. Apart from the center three panels, we have the top display for your time, parking and exterior temperature, plus some in indication light, things like that. Underneath, we have the fuel tank, and on the right, we have the water temperature. So these are permanently displayed around the vehicle. In terms of the right panel, if you want to change anything or adjust anything, you can go home and back, up and down over here. When you open the driving door, when you close the door, or when you have seatbelt warning, anything like that, this will show up the warning information. You can disable the warning information just by clicking the back button. There we go, that's now gone. But you do have then have a small triangle, just means you have a small warning information over there. Until that warning information is gone, it will kick back, it will, the warning light will be gone after you start driving and things like that. Alternatively, if you want to see the warning information which is displayed because you have indication, just click and hold OK button over here. Just like that. Now you can see view warning history. Click view warning history. That will show why there is a warning over there. Right now, we only have one message. It just means this warning information is about seatbelt, which I'm sitting on the driver's seat. I didn't buckle the seatbelt. Go back, go back. We are back to the, this particular display. In this particular display, we can go up and down for these particular panels that shows the after start consumption. We can show the RPM for the engine uh, performance. And then if you do want to reset either the after start or if you want to reset after resetting, you can change whatever you like. Let's say we want to change the after resetting, click and hold OK. We will ignore the warning history. We want to see reset journey info. So click OK. So that means reset successfully go back again now we have the after resetting so that's pretty much that about the resetting you can see your fuel consumption you can see your um, instant fuel consumption again some liter per hour depends on your driving you can see how much acceleration how much brake you get on the eco driving guidance if you want you can leave this permanently on you can see the slide on the right as well that means we have quite a few screen to go on this is your odometer this is the only way you can see your odometer by the way Go down, that's your information about your tire pressure monitoring system. Right now it's set on PSI in terms of the tire pressure and degree in terms of the percentage degree underneath. In case you want to change the tire pressure monitoring system, it's in the center display. In the system setting, let's go to the apps and go to settings. Under the setting, we have the display over here. Under display, we have to swipe all the way up you can see the tire pressure unit. You can do KPA, you can do bars, you can do PSI. As you do KPA, it will show over there, just like that. Whatever you like, in New Zealand, a lot of people prefer PSI, so you can leave on PSI, whichever you like. You can also change the temperature units, but in New Zealand, the Celsius is totally fun. After that, keep going down. We can go to the battery, so you can see how much battery you have got within the battery on you know, the EV charging. Again, it will fluctuate based on how you drive, based on how you charge. And last one, we are going back to the energy output again. After all this information, we can also go right. Next page, we have the music, which is the music that's playing. Right now, it's the radio control. Again, we can keep going right. That's your phone connection. If your phone is connected on Bluetooth, you can actually call someone directly from this list. Right now, nothing is connected. Go right again. We can do guide mode or classic mode or off-road mode. This is to change the inside, the middle screen. So if you do right now, it's the classic mode. So it just shows the driving, shows your um, assistance on um, the information. If you're driving a motorway, things like that, or show the curves, 
show the lens, shows the cruise control information. We can go guide mode, so that means we can see the navigation in front of us. This particular navigation is related to the center screen. So we go into the navigation and then let's go to navigation part. And once the navigation is on, it's going to show over here. If the navigation, you have any guidance, let's say we're going to search a random thing, just our search random thing, set a destination and start. Just like that, this will also start guidance. You can see the lines, you can see the small details on the top. So that's quite cool. So these are how the navigation looks like on the center screen. Next, if we keep going down, we can go to the off-road mode. That's quite cool. We engage the off-road mode, the center screen automatically goes to the off-road mode as well. So on the display of the driver cluster, you can see the approaching angle, you can see your um, rear angle, uh, you can see the traction on your four wheel, things like that. You can see the diff log. Um, so quite a lot of useful information if you do go off-road on this particular vehicle. Otherwise, if you drive on the motorway or standard safety driving, classic mode is pretty much preferred by most people. Otherwise, use guide mode. Next one, we can go right. That goes back to the last screen. So for any screen, you can go left and right, shuffle whenever you like, whatever you like into the screen. Additionally, if you go to the music or any other screen, you can also click home button. Click home, it'll go back to the original screen. If on the original screen, you keep going down, let's say we go re after resetting, and we're gonna go to the music screen again, click home once, it'll go back to the first screen, so you can see the after resetting, but if you click second time, it'll go back to the RPM again. So in terms of the display, some people prefer just standard speed on the left, RPM on the right, that's no issue. You can keep these on as always as you wish. So that's how that works with the digital dashboard on the Tank 300. All right, there you have it. Thanks for watching. Do not forget to subscribe and like and check the playlist down below for all the Tank 300 tutorial videos. As always, I'll see you in the next video.